This place better be amazing. It is amazing. I'm in southern Louisiana for a week, trying to find as many bird species as possible. With Derek as my guide, we have been checking out some of the best places to go birding in the entire state. The first three days we found 73 species, staying mostly in and around our base camp in Thibodeau. But today, we made a journey west, where the habitats and the animals that inhabit them are starkly different than the places we had visited earlier in the week. Hey everyone, this is Ryan from Badgerland Birding, and Derek and I are at the coastal salt marshes of southwestern Louisiana, and this is a really unique habitat. There are a lot of birds here that I don't usually get to see, but the one that we are going for most is the seaside sparrow, which would be a lifer for me. So this is part of Sabin National Wildlife Refuge, I believe is what it's called, and this is the Blue Goose Trail. And what I really like about this area is it just feels so remote, like it's very quiet. Um, we got a couple willets flying in, which is nice to see right off the bat. You can hear them in the background. We're gonna see if we can find a seaside sparrow. Um, that's awesome. Uh, we should hear them calling if they're here. So I know another spot we can try, but I've had them here in the past, so I just don't know if they're here right now. We began our search for the seaside sparrow, taking in the beauty of the marsh. Are you fascinated by this place? Because I am. I, this place is awesome. I love Cameron. That's why I said we needed to take you here, even though it's like three and three hours and 45 minutes away. While we didn't find any seaside sparrows in this location, we did find many other species in this interesting habitat, including neotropic cormorants, great egrets, common gallinules, and plenty of savanna sparrows. This was a really cool first salt marsh in Louisiana experience for me. Uh, a lot of these birds are ones I don't see very often, so I'm really excited about them, uh, even though we haven't found the seaside sparrow yet. But hopefully one of the other locations like this, we can find one. We left the salt marshes and headed to one of the premier destinations to see migratory birds in western Louisiana, Pivetto Woods. Before actually getting to the woods, however, we made a stop at a beach that was absolutely loaded with birds. We are right on the ocean right now at Holly Beach and there's a bunch of gulls and terns out there so it looks like we're gonna pick through them and see what we have which is exciting. Got gotcha, you a herring gull. Herring gull? Yeah that's kind of like more rare out here. Really? Yeah. We picked through all of the birds on the beach finding a nice array of species to add to our list. While there were many different species to look at, one species in particular caught our eye. We have a group of American avocets that we just stopped to look at, and they're one of the more common birds that you can find at Holly Beach, which is one of my personal favorites. They're just so elegant. I always wonder how they're able to get enough food with that very specialized bill, but we have a nice group with some individuals in breeding plumage and more non-breeding plumage so it's really nice to see the color differences they're really beautiful in both plumages after sufficiently scouring the beach we moved on down the road where we yet again got distracted by another bird species crested caracara i'll pull up right into this thing we'll see if it cooperates now that i said you they don't really cooperate he's probably not cooperate. he doesn't look like he wants to be cooperative We haven't even gotten to the legendary Pavetto Woods yet, and we've still seen tons of birds. So this is a really cool stretch, even just getting to this place. So I'm excited to see what it actually looks like once we're there. After finding many new species for the trip, we finally arrived at Pavetto Woods. We there? We made it. We just gotta go in, and then we'll pull into the parking lot. This place better be amazing. It is amazing. It's very cool. Passing by some houses on stilts, we pulled into one of the hottest spots in Louisiana for migratory birds. 
We are actually in a legitimately wooded area and this is one of the first places that migrants touch down when they make that journey north to uh, North America. This is called a chenier forest and as Ryan mentioned it is one of the first places migrating birds will come up because the gulf is right here so as those birds come in this is what they find the chenier forest. So this is a really important piece of land for migratory birds. What is a chenier forest? So a chenier is basically like, as the land is being built, it builds up these little ridges, and then the land gets built, and then there's another ridge, and then the land gets built, and then there's another ridge. So it kind of creates these like ridged areas, and these live oaks are great for warblers and, and migrants, but yeah, chenier forest is really important for birds. Do you think there'll be any warblers here today? I think so. Being a little early in the season and a little late in the day, the numbers of birds weren't anything compared to what they would be later in spring. Even so, we were able to find a few different birds right off the bat. So there was a lady that came and said that they saw like nothing and they're from Houston, um, but they had good stuff yesterday. So Ryan found a kinglet and this hooded warbler. So with that information, I feel like we're doing pretty well so far. Hooded warbler is a good bird. I'm really happy we found that. That's a really neat one. Also, um, this is like a well-known spot called the Drip, where there's like this mist air, so it attracts birds to come get a drink. It also appears to be attracting the wasps. It does, let's get out of here. We continued walking the trails through the forest, finding more birds. As our time there went on, we were able to accumulate a nice total. There are calls coming from everywhere, and it's a lot of the same species right now. There's white-eyed vireos, yellow-rumped warblers, and then we've seen a couple of hooded warblers, and of course the routine uh, northern cardinals and things like that. But I've been told that when it's in peak migration, this place is absolutely insane with species and diversity. It's pretty insane. Like, it's just colors everywhere, like indigo buntings, painted buntings, Swainson's warblers, um, yellow-throated warblers, hooded warblers, like black-throated green warblers, pretty much anything you could want. We found a couple more warblers and left the woods for our next destination. This was a really cool area and I can see why it would be so good for migrants. In a month or so, this place will probably be absolutely insane, but even now there were some really good species here, so I'm glad that we were able to come check it out. We started heading back east, but before we could really get into gear, we needed to cross a river that didn't have a bridge. So we are about to board the Cameron Ferry. And this is how we're going to get across the Calcasieu River here. It looks like there used to be a bridge here, but there no longer is. It's free to go this way, um, but it's a dollar to go back the other way. Are we in a good spot in line? I think so. It looks like it's on its way over, so. Could be perfect timing. Yeah, I think so. We boarded the ferry and took the slow ride across the river. We're on the ferry. I just brought a brown pelican from the ferry too. Hey! State bird of Louisiana, folks. Turns are crashing. There's more uh, brown pelicans over that way too. What's that burn? That's yeah. some serious burnage. After getting off the ferry, we made our way past a controlled burn to another patch of salt marsh where we hoped to find a seaside sparrow. While searching, we found an exciting snake species. Look at that. That's a gorgeous snake. What kind is he? Salt marsh snake, non-venomous. They're nocturnal, so I'm surprised it was out during the day. Is that like your holy grail of snakes? No, but I've never seen one, so it's a brand new herp. Are you kidding me? The other day you were like, oh, I would love to see a salt marsh snake. Oh, look at that. He's very cold. I wonder if he like just came out. After releasing the salt marsh snake, I caught my first glimpse of one of our target birds. I legit just heard and then saw a seaside sparrow while we were messing around in this ditch here. And uh, I want to go see if we can get it perching up. That would be amazing. Yeah, we know where it is, so let's go. Sadly, the seaside sparrow never reappeared. And with it starting to get later in the day, we moved on to a freshwater marsh to try and find some new duck species. This is Pintail Wildlife Drive. We're just going to run through here real quick. Um, it's basically like an auto tour. And uh, you can drive around and stop wherever you want. Um, we're gonna see if we can find Falvis Whistling Duck or Model Duck or really any other duck we haven't seen this trip. But it's kind of like a mini Horicon Marsh auto tour loop. The sides of the auto tour were loaded with ducks and wading birds in the shallow water. Yet it was another snake species that took our attention away from the birds. Like, check that out. 
Oh, he stinks. He does stink. I think it is a glossy swamp snake. Look at that. Is that That's rare? gorgeous. I don't think it's rare. It's cool, though. Yeah, he looks like he wants to strike. Definitely a cool find. Let's let Mr. Glossy Swamp Snake go. It's crazy how they just disappear. That was so cool. New snake. Two new herps for the day. After helping the Glossy Swamp Snake across the road, we turned our attention back to the birds, finding many different species, including some distant views of roseate spoonbills. Eventually, we moved on from the pintail loop and headed to our last location of the day. We are leaving the pintail loop and going to Lacassine, so we should have about an hour there to try to find a fulvous whistling duck and uh, maybe a model duck. So as far as like getting new species, we've probably been most successful with the spoonbills for rye, but uh, the views have been pretty distant. He also got the seaside sparrow, but we should be able to get better views. It's tough because it's the beginning of migration, so stuff hasn't really settled in. It's kind of like just moving in. So it's still kind of getting settled, but we're doing our best. We arrived at Lacassine as the sun was starting to set. We looked through the ibises and other birds until we happened upon a small group of ducks that looked different. Fulvis whistling ducks, new lifer for you. Fulvis whistling ducks out there. We're gonna go get some better views of them, maybe even set up the tripod, but this is really exciting. A new duck species for me. So we're looking at the fulvus whistling ducks right now. I always get excited to see fulvus because uh, we see the black-bellied whistling ducks so often that like it's a treat to see the one that's a little bit different. And so actually when we passed these, I thought they might be fulvus because they look kind of like a different color. They have kind of like a tannish body and they're sitting uh, kind of up a little bit. So it's a really great view. A short while later, we were able to find a model duck, another life bird. As the sun fell farther beyond the horizon, the wetlands came alive with flocks of birds settling in, as well as sounds coming from every direction. It was at this beautiful time of day that I got my best view of a roseate spoonbill for just a few seconds before it flew off. I think overall we did really well for the day. I mean, we saw some nice warblers in the morning. Uh, we got Ryan four life birds. Uh, still need to get some better seaside sparrow videos and maybe some better spoonbill views depending on where we are. That was a common yellow field. Um, so yeah, overall I think we've done really well today. We've seen a lot of really cool habitats too. On our way out, we had one more new species when we noticed a great horned owl barely visible in the darkness. After four days in Louisiana, I eclipsed my goal of 100 bird species, coming in at 118. With two days left, I was confident I could grow my total even higher. Be on the lookout for the next video from my trip to Louisiana. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.